Hello everybody, I'm Jennifer Maker. Please pull up a chair in my craft room and welcome to day one of the Great Maker Show and Tell. Today we are going to be making these fun wooden signs that look amazing on a front porch. And bonus, they're reversible. So you can show your holiday spirit and then flip it right over for the rest of the year. How cool is that? So to make this sign, you're going to need um, a piece of wood, a piece of board like this, some paint, sandpaper, polycrylic, outdoor permanent vinyl, and transfer tape. You will find the complete materials list linked below as well as over on my blog at jennifermaker.com. Now, let me show you exactly how to make this awesome sign. First, you need to prepare your board. Start by sanding it and then wiping off all the sawdust. You're gonna paint it. I used a red chalk paint and you're just gonna get that all over one side. Turn it over, sand the other side, and then apply your second color. So I've got red on one side and white on the other. I'm using chalk paint, but you could use just regular acrylic or latex paint too. Um, it's not important what kind of paint you use really, unless you want a weathered look. Um, and then. I have added a kind of snowy look to my red side by just taking a dry brush and dabbing it around the edges. Then you're going to want to seal both sides with polycrylic. And this is important because it's going to help those vinyl letters stick and not come off. And I'm using matte polycrylic here. And then make sure you give it some time to dry. Now our sign letters are made from vinyl. You could cut this out by hand. And I do have a letter pattern on my blog for this but I am going to use a Cricut cutting machine instead. And if you also have a Cricut, here's what you do. Begin by going to Cricut Design Space and clicking New Project. You are going to want to go over to the left and click Shapes and choose Square. This is going to be our sign. So go up to the top and click the little Unlock button there and then type in the size of your board. My board is eight inches wide by 48 inches tall. So you type that in and well, uh, your square changes to this, the shape of your, the size of your sign. So we know exactly how to position our letters. This is important. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this sign uh, to white. So um, it simulates my actual sign. Now click on text over on the left and you're gonna start typing in whatever text you want. I'm gonna do welcome and it's gonna be vertical letters. So I'm just typing each letter and then the return key to make them all show up below one another, just like this. We're going to change the font to something classic like Times New Roman. Um, just select that there. And then I'm going to choose the style as bold. Go to the alignment menu and choose center. There we go. Now I'm going to drag this over and expand it using the double arrow icon and position it perfectly onto my sign. Now, if the letters seem like they're too widely spaced, you can use the line space option here to uh, reduce the line spacing in between just as I am. And then um, you can also, you'll want to make that a little, you know, just do it until it looks good to you. And then you can use that resize icon again to click and drag it so that it fills up um, you don't want it to go edge to edge on your sign, right? You want it to be centered nicely in your sign. Now, if we just took this right now and clicked make it, what happens is we get a notice that says our image is too large. So this doesn't work, right? But don't worry, I'm going to show you how to make this work. Okay, let's get rid of the sign. The sign is like huge, right? Now let's click make it again. It still tells us that our our words are too big. So we're going to click on advanced and choose ungroup to letters. Now we're going to click make it. And this is what we get. So all of our letters are individual, but they're like all over the place. This is not going to work. So instead we're going to make registration marks. So click on shapes over on the left and choose star. And you're going to drag the star over under your W. Let's make the screen a little bigger so we can see it. Now click the star and choose Make it black. For some reason, the shapes always come up as gray. You want it to be black just like your letters. Use the resize, I, resize icon to make that star uh, much smaller. Now, we're going to right click and duplicate this star 
and put it below each of our letters or really in between each of our letters. We're going to be using the star as a registration mark so that when we cut out our vinyl, we know exactly where to place our letters. And this, this makes this whole process really foolproof and you don't have to guess about spacing on your letters or anything like that. And bonus, you get a cute little star in between your letters. If you don't want a star, you could use a different shape. You could use a line instead, or you can just remove this vinyl before you ever even apply it. So here we go. There's our welcome with the stars in between. Let's click a line and center everything. Now it's all perfectly centered and positioned, right? That's awesome. So, so if we click make it now, right now, what we get is just all of our letters and all of our stars. This isn't going to work, right? We need, we need to attach things together so that our stars stay with our letters. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to, um, first of all, we're going to duplicate this star because we're going to need some extra copies. And then I want you to select the W and a star and click attach down in the lower right. Okay. So you're going to be attaching stars to letters. So the top and bottom letters only need one star each, but the middle letters are going to need a star above and below so that you can match it up to the letters that come above and below it, right? So we're just going to go through here. We're going to um, duplicate the stars or, you know, make new stars if you have to. Just be sure to change them to black each time. And you want them to be the same size, so I prefer to duplicate them. And you're going to put them right on top of the previous star. Right, so that each letter has a star and then a letter and then a star and then a click attach. Right, so you can go through and do this for each one of these letters. So make sure that you have a star at the top and then your letter and then a star at the bottom and that everything is lining up and attaching. So if you only had one star, um, you know, like above and below, it wouldn't allow you to position it. It wouldn't allow you, that's why we call it a registration mark. So this is really the best way, and this is the foolproof way of doing this, so that you don't have to worry about whether you're getting things, you know, in the right position or whatever. I think it's amazing. I love this method. I, I don't know if anyone else does this or anything, but I knew that because we had to make this larger than Matt, I needed a way to keep you know, my spacing perfect. So, um, and I used to work in a print shop a long, long time ago. And we always used registration marks to do you know, layers of ink on a piece of paper. So it's a very similar concept. Okay. So now we have all of our letters and if we click make it, we now see our letters and our stars are all attached together in nice little blocks that's going to allow us to put them on our board. So we click continue and we select our device. And you're going to want to click browse all materials and scroll down until you find the vinyl section. And you'll want to select premium outdoor vinyl, click done. I like to change my pressure to more. And now you're ready to load your mat and start cutting out your vinyl, right? So this is uh, really doesn't take very long to cut at all. Um, they're nice, simple letters. And you're going to want to do uh, four sheets. Uh, it's possible that you'll get a little more than four sheets when you do your design. If your sign is a little different, if your sign is bigger, just got to make sure that your stars and your letters don't go beyond 12 inches. Okay, so be sure to save your project so that you can come back and make this again if you would like to. Um, so there you go, just save that. And now it's time to start cutting it out. I'm gonna use my maker because that's what I have set up here for the video, but you could also use an explorer. It doesn't matter which one that you use for this. Um, I'm gonna use a standard grip mat um, because it's my favorite and a piece of black outdoor vinyl. I'm using Oracle 651 here. You wanted to set that vinyl right onto your mat, line it up with the grid lines into the upper left-hand corner and smooth everything out so it's adhering to the mat really well. And then slide it under your guides on your Cricut. Click the load button and your mat loads in. And when it's all ready, the Cricut uh, little button will flash and that means it's time Right, so right there, it means it's time to go. Click that and your project starts cutting. And it's that amazing. I just love the Cricut. <laughs> I, 
I could cut this out by hand absolutely with scissors or with an exacto knife, but I know that when I use my Cricut, it's gonna come out exactly the way that I told it to cut without any issues and I can replicate it over and over and over and it's just so much faster also. So, and it really doesn't take long to cut these letters. I think um, maybe five minutes tops to cut all four sheets of my black vinyl. Um, and that's pretty amazing also. Who doesn't want to save some time, right? When it's all finished, I click the unload button and take this vinyl off the mat. I'm gonna flip my mat over and I'm gonna curl the mat away from the vinyl. This prevents the vinyl from curling itself um, and it keeps it nice and flat. So you just um, curl your mat away from your vinyl as you go. And this works really well for paper too, which is more apt to want to curl. And uh, there we go. You can see that it's cut out and it's ready for us to continue on with, right? So we're gonna load up the next mat, uh, the next piece of vinyl under mat. Now once all four black vinyl sheets are cut, you're gonna wanna turn your attention to the white letters. So I've prepared an SVG file for you. So you're gonna wanna get this SVG file into Cricut Design Space. Here's how you do it. You download it, first of all, unzip it. And then in Cricut Design Space, you click New Project. And then you're gonna to wanna to click on the Upload button on the left side. Click Upload Image, click Browse, and then find the file that you downloaded. You're looking for the folder, and it's gonna be an SVG file, okay? And that will upload to Cricut Design Space. Click Save, and you will see it appear and then just click that and click insert images. And then here it is. And the cool thing about this is you don't have to do anything. I've got it all ready to go. It's even separated into nice little chunks and mats. I'm using snowflakes for registration marks in this case. So you can see half snowflakes there and that's how you're gonna match everything up. And it sorts into three mats. So just click continue, choose your Cricut, Click Browse All Materials. Um, we're just gonna search on vinyl this time, so type that in and choose Premium Outdoor Vinyl, click Done. Change your pressure to more if you would like, and load up your Cricut with your uh, white vinyl and start cutting it out. Uh, it'll, this one will take a little longer because the snowflakes are more detailed, but you shouldn't have any issues other than that. So we're going to put our white vinyl on our mat exactly the same way we did our black vinyl. Line that up in the upper left-hand corner, smooth everything down, and it's all ready to go. You're just gonna click the flashing button and it's going to start cutting. And when it's all done, you're gonna click the unload button and your mat will unload. You're gonna to wanna to separate it from your mat just the same way. You can't really quite see the cut because it's a matte white, but it's there, I promise. Um, you're going to want to separate the mat from your, the vinyl from your mat in the same way. So turn it over, curl your mat away from your vinyl to keep the vinyl from curling. So now we have our board, our cut vinyl, and it's time for us to weed it and put it onto our board, both sides. So white on the bl or black vinyl on white and white vinyl on black. And we also need some transfer sheets so that we can actually get the vinyl onto the board. So now it's time to prepare the vinyl and we're going to weed it. So this is actually not difficult. You're really just gonna peel the extra vinyl off of your, your sheet. So it's gonna come off like this. Just wanna be careful, don't let um, it stick to itself because it's really very sticky. Um, this is Oracle 651, very, very sticky. So you can see here, I made the mistake of letting it get stuck to itself. So if that happens, just gently peel it off. And um, it's almost ready, but you can see the O has a center. So you can peel that off as well. You can use a, we a weeding tool if you need to. Um, and there we go, E and O is done going to take a sheet of transfer tape. I like this flat stuff, but you can also use this stuff on a roll. You're gonna peel that right off, and then you're gonna gently place it uh, over your image, um, over your vinyl, I should say. Um, and you wanna start in the corner and smooth outward to avoid creases and bubbles, and then 
um, you know, make sure that you burnish it down really well. You can use your fingers or you can use a burnishing tool, whatever works for you. And then we're going to cut out each of the letters. Now don't cut out the stars. The stars stay with the letters, remember, because those are our registration marks. But we want to separate each letter from itself um, so that we can put them all together on our board. So there's E and there's O, and you're going to do the same thing for the rest of the letters. And now you'll see as you match up the stars, right, they all will form, that they'll all just be, so we're just putting the stars on top of each other, and you can see we've got all the letters here, and they will go perfectly onto our sign without us having to stress about it. So once you have all your letters cut out, just stack them up in order so that you don't accidentally put your letters on in the wrong order, because that happens. Um, also, don't forget to do the white letters as well. So same thing, peel off the white extra, the extra white, so starting from the corner. Now this is a more complicated design. Um, the little snowflakes are a bit fiddly, so you might want to just um, cut the extra vinyl off as you go so that you don't have a lot of uh, vinyl hanging about and wanting to stick to itself and causing issues. I find that taking off the excess as I go is really um, the best way to avoid problems. <laughs> um, yeah, so just re keep removing that, um, the vinyl, <clears throat> and cut it off as you go, just like this. It doesn't really take too long. If you get a little bit like that wants to pull off, you can just gently put it back down again. So there's some more letters to do this for all of your sheets of vinyl. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put a piece of transfer tape over your letters. There you go, smooth it all out. And just like with the welcome sign, you're going to cut out. Just make sure that you're cutting out the, keeping the right snowflakes with the right letters. And if you're not sure what goes with what, refer back to the um, image that you upload to Cricut Design Space so you can see which snowflakes go with which letters. Awesome, so now we have our board all painted, our black vinyl letters, and we're going to put our letters onto our board using our star registration marks. Right? So it's going to line up perfectly. You see, it's just the right size. Yay. Okay, so to do this, we're going to um, start at the top, right? And you're going to want to peel the transfer tape off of your letter. Just gently do this um, so that your vinyl stays stuck on the transfer sheet. And center the W about an inch down from your board. And then press everything down really well. Right, so you're burnishing this down so that when you peel off this transfer tape, it's going to stay on your board. And it's actually great. It'll work great, really. This The Oracle 651 is very sticky. It's an excellent, it's a really excellent vinyl. So you just continue, right? So you um, pull off the thing, and then you, now you're going to put your star on top of your other star. Just, just like that. So you don't have to worry about whether you're getting it. Uh, centered, uh, aligned centered, or um, how much space is in between letters because it, you've already done all of the work and you're just putting the vinyl letters on the board right now. <clears throat> this is um, this is definitely the way to do this. So you just line up your stars. That's it. That's all you do. You just line up your stars. So you just keep going on down the board, making sure that you press those that vinyl down really well and then gently pull off the transfer tape. So let's do the rest of the letters now. If you get a little bit of vinyl that doesn't quite want to come off the backing, I like to just take my fingernail and just help it help it onto the transfer tape, right? Once it gets started, it's usually fine. If you're having a lot of issues with that, that means that you need to burnish your vinyl um, to your transfer tape more, right? So just press a little harder. Um, before you before you remove your transfer tape and it'll come off easier then.
you can see there that that little bit of the uh, M doesn't want to quite come off so I just burnish it down again and then this time it's more likely to want to come right off just like it ought to and so line up the stars again make sure that it's nice and flat and then then burnish it down And then the last letter, make sure that's down nice and tight. Take off the transfer sheet. And line up your stars. There we go. Wasn't that easy? I mean, and look at it. Looks pretty darn perfect to me. Not that I really ever strive for perfection. <laughs> but this was actually really easy to do. The registration marks are the secret. So let's turn it over and do the other side, right? Lay them on your board the way they're supposed to be. And you're going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to burnish everything down and gently remove the backing making sure that your vinyl transfers to um, the transfer tape, okay? And then center on your board. You're gonna want to center the B, that the first snowflake in the upper left corner will be fairly close to the side of the board. Um, so there you go, just center that down, push everything down, make sure it's nice and smooth. and then peel off your transfer tape. Man, I just love doing that. <laughs> it's so nice, it comes off so easily. And then, so in this case, instead of um, centering your stars or lining up your stars, you're going to match up snowflakes. So I've got half a snowflake on each section. So you just line up um, your snowflakes so they meet, and then you know you've got it in the right position. And then you just keep going like this. One of the advantages of using an SVG that somebody prepares or that you make yourself is that you have more control over things like this. So I was able to prepare this file for you so that the snowflakes were, you know, everything was like, I knew it would like fit onto your mats for you without having you having to attach things together and that sort of thing. So and I really like doing that. And in fact, if you prefer to just not do the work in, in Design Space to make the welcome sign, you can actually get the link to my welcome design in Cricut Design Space, and you can just go directly to that link and use that one instead. So if you're just not in the mood, or you just want to use mine exactly the way that I made it, you're welcome to use that design. It's not an SVG, it's a, instead it's a canvas in Design Space. Whereas this belief sign is an SVG. So there's a little different here, but both are available to you, um, free to use. And I love this idea of matching up the snowflakes. I think that, that worked out really well. Um, and so we had the last one, the E. And do the same thing, peel off that final backing, center your snowflakes, and press it down. Gosh, this is, turned out so cute. I'm super, I'm super excited about this. All done. I cannot wait to put this on my front porch. Doesn't that look amazing? I am so pleased with this. And there we go. Easy peasy. And I have a confession to make. This was actually my very first time making a sign like this. That's how easy this is. And you can make one too. Now, you may be curious why I would make a video for a first time project. Well, there's a reason for that. I'm embarking on a new challenge to teach you all the things that you want to learn how to make. And if I don't know how to make it, I will find out for you. So when I asked everyone what they would like me to make, a wood sign with vinyl letters was my number one request. 
So ta-da! And that's why this is called the Great Maker Show and Tell. You tell me what you want me to make and I will show you how to make it. You can learn more and send in your project ideas and requests at jennifermaker.com. Tomorrow I'll be back and together we're going to make another popular project that I keep getting requests for, a pretty paper poinsettia, a little like the one that's sitting on my shelf over there. And in the meantime, I have a lot of other really cool projects that you might enjoy making. So for example, I have everything from uh, Giant Paper Rose, which is one of my most popular designs, and Paper Luminaries, to this cottage, a leather journal, and an impossible box. And it's called an impossible box because it looks like it's impossible to get into until you pull up on the lid and then you can get into the goodies. Other fun holiday projects on my blog include these tear strip gift tags so that you can keep a recipient's name secret until they tear off the strip, and my pretty Christmas tree countdown calendar, which has a box for every day leading up to Christmas. I love this project because so many people made it this year and shared their photos of it, and guys, that just makes my heart happy to see. So and speaking of which, if you make a sign using this technique, please share your photos with me. You can share them in our Facebook group or email me. Links to both are below and over at jennifermaker.com slash show and tell. I can't wait to see the amazing signs that you're going to make. And remember, if you can tell me what you want, I can show you how to make it. Until tomorrow. Mm -hmm.